Ladies and gents, welcome back to the Pit Stop Podcast, the greatest Formula One podcast in the world. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. It's December, all right? We're coming to the end of the year. We made a promise to you guys that for throughout the rest of December until the season starts again, we're just going to get guest after guest. Mm-hmm. And so we're honoring that promise today with another special guest. You're yeah, not just anyone, though. We've got Felipe Drogovic. Thank you very much for being here, mate. Let's go. Oh, round of applause again. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an honor to be, to be here. It uh, is. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've You're watched, the F2 uh, champion yeah, as well. I'm honored to have you. Mate. I mean, uh, I've watched a few uh, podcasts you guys did. So, yeah, I was you know, looking forward to be here. I got to say, mate, fair play to you for coming today because you've just hopped off a flight. Yeah, yeah. You went to the hotel and you've come straight here. So. Yeah, I went to the hotel straight here. I'm, uh, straight from here to the awards, uh, Autosport Awards. So is that uh, what you've flown into London for for the awards? Yeah, yeah. And then after I'll be doing a few simulator days at the team. Are you expecting to win any awards tonight? Is it awards for you? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, uh, just a guest. Yeah, a few I drinks, mean, dance. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I have no idea why I'm going there, but yeah. We'll, we'll give you an award. We'll yeah. find something in the flat Hopefully that we I'll, can I'll have an award, but uh, I haven't been told anything about <laughs> that. So. You've actually got the perfect thing to get him ready for a party. I do, actually. I really do. Do you drink? Um, pff, almost nothing, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe, maybe for one time on the Pit Stop podcast, you could, because you are Brazilian. Yeah. Right, you are Brazilian. So I wanted to make you feel a bit more okay. at home. Okay. Um, so what I've basically done is I've prepared okay. some... Uh, well, let me just go grab them. Fab has been to the shop. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. I'm we, curious about We this haven't one. had many guests from like all over the world yet. We're meeting yeah. people from all over the world. Right. We're trying to make you feel at home. Oh, so Fab was bought. Hello, <laughs> stuff. Oh, oh no. <laughs> he's dropping it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> what is this massive tray he's got? Uh, Please, Philippe, mate, I wanted to um I wanted to prepare some a traditional Brazilian beverage. <laughs> uh, maybe you can help me with the pronunciation. Caipirinha. Caipirinha. What were yes. you calling it? Caparana. Or no. something. <laughs> <laughs> it's all you're getting there, mate. <laughs> but um, I love the idea. It's going to get you in the party mode, get you a bit more, um, get you feeling... <laughs> oh my God, it's falling it's out everywhere. Everywhere. Get you feeling good for the Autosport Awards later. So we'll have a chat and I'm going to prepare <laughs> okay, okay, okay. a few drinks. Right, I'll leave, no, I'll no, leave that, that one I don't want to enjoy drinking, so... You're, Yours, yeah. you, you're, gonna, you're not going to have one? No, no, I'm going to... Oh, you I, I said I'm going to enjoy drinking. You're a legend. Thank you so much. Right, I appreciate Fab, that. You, you cook up three of them. I will. It's and not, I'll keep Felipe busy for the time being. Don't watch how I make them because... I'm probably going to do it wrong. Is Wait, it? do you know how to make them, though? Uh, you might know some no, special... I, I want to watch him doing it. All right, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll review how he does it. Yeah. Is this the right alcohol? Uh, it says Havana Club. I don't actually think it's... Um... Normally, we don't do with this one. But <laughs> you I think probably it's... bought the cheapest <laughs> one. <mate. laughs> it's, it's rum, though, so it's, it should be fine. Perfect. For the listeners at home, Fab has got a chopping board, three limes, three glasses, a glass of salt, and a bottle a of Havana. A glass of salt? salt. Is it, that's is sugar. It? Oh, it's sugar. But it's supposed to be sugar. <laughs> if if that really, salt is... <laughs> if that salt, we've we got it wrong. <laughs> oh, my God. Watching you with that knife on the sofa, <laughs> is, that knife is so blunt as well. This lime is indestructible. I just can't <laughs> this even couldn't be going that. any worse to start. So, um, so Felipe, I mean, I know that you're Brazilian, but you're also actually, you have a dual nationality. You're Brazilian and Italian, right? Yeah, I have uh, an Italian citizenship, but, uh, you know, I can consider myself fully Brazilian. And you were born in Brazil? Yeah, I'm born in Brazil. I've lived there until um, 13 to 14 years old. And then I moved to Italy for karting, basically. But I, I'm I'm back in Brazil all the time, so I'm, yeah. I'm not that I completely left Brazil. So where are you actually based? In um, uh, close to Milan, actually, okay. uh, north north of Italy. Wow, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, that's uh, where I'm based. You know, it's good location to go to the races and stuff, and you know, get myself. Uh, uh, acclimatized to you know European uh, <laughs> weather, yeah, the weather. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought you would have to be in the UK quite a lot because of Aston Martin. And yeah, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thank Sign you, with Aston Martin. That's really exciting. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think uh, I also thought I was supposed to to come and live here, but then I asked the people and they said, uh, no, for for next year I can at least uh, you know keep it. Uh, that went a lot in there, Oh no! Is that too that, much sugar? <laughs> yeah, a bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh... <laughs> Man, this is shocking. These drinks. Are uh, let, me, let me just get over and done with. Let me talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fake nothing happened here, guys. <laughs> okay. So you've got a load of flights then. If you're living in Italy, but you still you're coming over yeah, here to work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the flight is short, so it's like yeah. one and a half hours, and yeah, it's easy. And Aston Martin's at Silverstone, right? Yeah. So you spend yeah. a lot of time there yeah. now, testing yeah. and all of that. Uh, not 
so much testing, but uh, I mean, I've, I've done only one test with a 21 car. Uh, so you have driven this year's, you did go out, didn't you, in this year's F1 car? Yeah, in, in Abu Dhabi. I did the FP1 and then yeah, yeah, the yeah. Young Drivers test after that. How was that straight away? Because, you know, you're an F2 champion, you've driven other cars, but you've got power steering now. Yeah, it was car. really, really cool. It was uh, an amazing experience. I think the Friday was really chaotic because, you know, uh, for some reason they, they made the, the schedule like probably free practice for Formula 2 and then not even like two hours free practice for Formula 1 oh and then like 30 minutes to, for, um, uh, to Formula 2 qualifying. So we just basically hopped out of the car, changed the suit and went in again in the oh, Formula wow. 2 car because they pushed the cars to the F1 pit lane. And That's then, insane. Uh, That's insane. And basically turn one, I missed the apex by five meters or something. <laughs> and then yeah. I completely, completely messed up my my first lap because you know no power steering the the car basically the first lap they they just told me okay please don't come to the box and say <laughs> it doesn't break it doesn't accelerate it doesn't corner <laughs> don't say that um but yeah it was fine i think after lap two it was fine how different is it not driving with power steering in f2 is it is it a lot harder by the yeah, way yeah it's it, sorry, it, there's, there's yours Okay, look I'll at try. that! It doesn't look like something you'd get at a five-star bar, does it? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you, might need, you might need a spoon to stir the sugar in. No. Fab has just handed the drink to Felipe. We're about to get a uh, taste test. Are you not going to make me one? <laughs> I am, but I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit caught up in this whole thing. I'm actually really nervous about this. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, I don't die. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't die. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Any really good? It looks good, no? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Bit strong. If you had to rate it out of 10, what would you rate did, it? Did you at least like watch a, a tutorial on YouTube or something? I, like no, I read like a, like a thing online. Okay. Well, okay. I just read the ingredients. I yeah. didn't actually read how to make them. Yeah. I mean, first of all, for you, try to put a lot of ice in. Oh, oh there needs to... Oh, no. You didn't even put ice in it! <laughs> oh my god, you I didn't want to say anything, but... <laughs> <laughs> if you got given that in a bar, you would have to complain. Fab has handed a glass full of lime and alcohol and sugar. Yeah, go and now he has run to the fridge, got a bag of ice, and is dropping ice into the glass. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the listeners for the pod that aren't watching Thank you. involved. But now, okay, that's not going to make it any taste any different, though, is it? Well, no, I, it changes a little bit. It's a big ingredient in a caparana. <laughs> so Wait, maybe it? maybe now it would taste good. Can you make me one? Yeah, I will. Thank I you, will. sir. Yeah, so you've... Simon Vassar Martin, congratulations for that. And I've been trying to book you right. to come on the pod all of last season. I was messaging you at the beginning. You were racing in F2. Yeah. But now you've got the F2 championship. And I was uh, watching the highlights for it earlier. And the last race where you're on the side and you're not in the car... It must be quite a different experience being able to celebrate that moment, but being stood there with the team. Because yeah. usually you'll be in the car, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I I told this many times, but like, I think you have to look at it in, in a positive way. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And obviously I wanted to win from the car, inside the car, but uh, as soon as I, you know, I got pushed wide and, you know, the, the suspension just, just broke and I had to, to retire. And then, um, and I was watching. That, I was like, actually, this is not too bad because I'm basically, you know, it was like a weird feeling. I was actually cheering for me from outside, yeah, <laughs> on my own race. So I mean, it was quite weird, but it was it was actually cool. And then you're able to go out the week after and win it for the team as well. Yeah, yeah. The the last the last weekend was really cool. Uh, two podiums on both races, so it was really good. And that team's MP, right? Yeah. MP. Is MP, it like MP Motorsport. Yeah. 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 We don't know much about the F2 teams, but we started yeah. getting into F2 a lot last season mm -hmm. and we we're watching it. MP seemed like a good team and your teammate was Clem. Clem, yeah. Look at this. This is you, good knowledge for me. You're actually Clem doing really well. How did Clem do? Clem on what? Uh, Longley, footballer. <laughs> no? <laughs> Novelak. Oh, Novelak, that's it. That's it. I, I only know Clem the other yeah. <laughs> That's really bad. No, it was, uh, it was his first year. He was, uh, you know, he was struggling a little bit. Um, yeah. He came from a really good year in, in F3. He was, I think, uh, yeah, P3 last year in F3. Uh, but he struggled a little bit. But uh, yeah, I know he's good and probably next year he'll be doing good. I was sat there last night. We were watching the boxing last night. And um, there was like Tyson Fury and a couple, there was like Joe Joyce and Alexander Usyk in the crowd. And they started having some beef because they, they're going to fight each other. But they're still friends. And I, that kind of like made me think, I mean, is it the same for you guys in F2? Are you all you boys like friends? Who race together, but then when you're on the track, 
you, how does that dynamic work? I think uh, it's pretty relaxed. I would say that the the, the paddock. Um, actually, like F one now, most of the drivers they they know each other. They're kind yeah. of kind of friends. Mm. Not all of them, obviously, but um, it's quite it's quite chill to be fair. And yeah, I got a good relationship with uh, many drivers. Um, but yeah, nothing. I think not nothing too crazy. I would say two or three. I'm actually you know good friends, and but the rest is just like normal relationship. Yeah, I actually had the exact same question written down on my notes, literally word really? for word. Yeah. But I was thinking the same thing because I was I went through Instagram and saw that you were carting with Marcus Armstrong. So you've known Marcus for a long time. Yeah, you've yeah. probably known a lot of the drivers for a long time. Yeah. And we'll get on to Marcus because yeah. we know the pod and everything. We want to yeah. talk about that. You're good friends with these people. But yeah. if you're like P1, P2 and you're battling on the track. Uh, that there's that there's moment, no friendship there. Yeah, in <laughs> yeah. that moment, you're not thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to his house for dinner later. No, 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 no. It's fully battle, no, no. battle. As soon as the visor goes down, it's, there's nothing about that. <laughs> but that'd be the same for both of you, wouldn't it? Like he'd be yeah, the same yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, that's why. I mean, it's fair because everyone is, you know, doing the same. It's also like, I don't know, uh, people were like complaining about, you know, some moves that some people did to me at some points. And then I was like, if, if I was at his place I was I'll be doing the same you do so. exactly the same yeah, thing. yeah. so yeah. There's, there's there's no point complaining it's amazing just seeing a Brazilian driver to be fair yeah. like we love Senna we, yeah. we watch the movie and everything yeah. and it's incredible I'd love to see a Brazilian driver on the F1 grid yeah but also Brazilian fans are yeah. amazing yeah they are they're crazy yeah. so you have an incredible fan base of people yeah. and now you're in the F1 paddock steps away from that F1 seat yeah I guess this is like as close as you can get until you're there yeah yeah, yeah it is it is but uh you know the, the step from here to actually getting a main seat is quite it's quite harsh mm. but uh you know i'll be doing everything that i can to you know get my, myself prepared and, and be there one day you're in a good position yeah yeah i mean it's uh for sure austin has given me a, a really good opportunity you know i've already you know the same year that i, that I, that I got the contract done i already did one day of testing uh in silverstone uh okay it was basically just a few kilometers to get my super license for the fp1 mm. Then FP1 and, and the proper test day at the end. Uh, and how actually, does super license work? Can I just stop you? Like, well, how many points do you need? And I need you need 40 points to actually get the super license. But so to, for an F1 seat, you yeah, have to have 40 points. 40 points. And when you had one F2, how many did you have then? Uh, I don't know how many I had then. But if you finish in the top three in Formula 2, you get 40 points. Which is Oh, it, so then you're eligible. Yeah, you basically can do nothing for your whole career and finish top three in, in f2 and you'll be fine really so so because we want to we actually want to become racers we thought about starting our own f4 <laughs> whenever team. we say that it makes me laugh but i know we are being no start in f2 uh, just go straight to f2 yeah make sure you finish on top three <laughs> this is what i wanted to hit yeah. See, this guy's realistic <laughs> he, knows, he knows the route into f1 <laughs> don't fuck about with f4 f3 um wait i've just made you a drink so so i've got a try as looks significantly better than the drink you gave him. That doesn't look no, too actually bad. My one is looking good now. It's actually it needed some time for the limes to really yeah, come yeah. out. And cheers, mate. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Felipe. <laughs> you don't have to have any more if you so don't want it, but let's have a cheers. <laughs> cheers. Down the hatch. Yes, yeah, have a taste up. test. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! I've spilled it everywhere. That is so rank. Oh god. That's disgusting. I'm not even touching that for the rest of the pod. I am going to drink it all because the football's on later and it's England, so I need to get a few drinks <laughs> down there. <laughs> right, right. Time, having a few drinks, time having to, a bit of water. <laughs> time to focus. Okay. I want. I'd love to go back to the beginning and, and really find out how you actually got into racing. Mm -hmm. Like, what kind of what pulled you to do it? Did you have a family member or did you watch it on TV? Yeah, I had. Um, um, Basically, my three uncles, they used to race, not professionally, but uh, they, they used to race and, and they liked the, you know, uh, the sports and they basically, you know, gave me the passion. Um, they asked if, if, I, if I wanted to try a go-kart when I was seven years old, said yes. And from there I was, uh, you know, I just liked it and I just keep, kept asking for it. Uh, they, they never really pushed me to do anything, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, just wasn't like, uh, you know, there's, there's a few families that they really want, the, you know, someone to do that sport or something yeah, but they yeah. said if you want to do it or if you just want to stop just, just tell us and and i just kept asking oh, get me to the track get me to the track and yeah there we went what 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 was it that kept pulling you back like what what were you feeling why were you so attracted to it once you started i think you know just so young and driving small you know karting circuits is just like the feeling of freedom and you know 
just driving i think it was something mm. that i really enjoyed back then well i still enjoy obviously obviously <laughs> yeah. but uh you know uh as, as a kid i think you don't really think about many other things mm. just you know j just a feeling of driving what's school like in brazil it's cool yeah what's it like in brazil it was actually really cool actually it was was good i enjoyed school in, in brazil i wonder how different it is to school here yeah i didn't really enjoy school in italy um was a bit you know uh because of obviously because of the sport you were like never at school yeah and then uh i think i just felt people didn't really uh understood a few things and also i studied in, in a proper italian school not in, like a international school or something oh so then people were like oh this guy's brazilian and i was like the only non-italian guy in, in the whole school yeah and i was a bit weird um <laughs> But, uh, you know, after like one or two years, then it was fine. But uh, actually, school in Brazil is, is really cool. Wait, so how old were you when you when you moved to Italy? Uh, 13. 13, okay. All these drivers we have on have crazy stories, man. Yeah. Wait, wait, so you, but you moved to Italy to race? Yeah. So at 13 years old, you've moved to Italy. Did you go with like family members? Uh, my mum came with me. Wow. Which was good. That's I was lucky because there's many many drivers they they move up, they move alone which is yeah because like that, really harsh like realistically that's like a massive sacrifice for your mom as well yeah, yeah like yeah. she's given up like her life yeah, yeah. is like to come on this journey with yeah. you which is amazing and, and I'm her only child which is I think that's why that I, helps I, yeah yeah for sure <laughs> like, mm. okay she's gonna come with me and yeah but that was uh, really good uh, you know. How does she feel about your racing? Does she get like scared of you going really? Uh, she quick? gets a bit scared, but uh, you know she's the you know the number one fan that I have, which yeah, is yeah. like she going to most of the races that I go to. She's uh, you know I just ask her like, do you want to come? She's like, yeah yeah yeah, I want to come yeah. every race, <laughs> which is really cool. She knows you know what you're doing. Yeah, you're F two champion now, so she don't have to worry as much. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk. Let's talk sort of for a timeline. So you've moved to Italy. Were you karting in Italy, or did you go? Did you step straight yeah, into yeah, karting? Yeah. No, I did uh, three years um, of karting yeah. in Europe, um, uh -huh. Italy. I mean, karting is basically Italy all the time. If you if you go to international karting, it's basically in Italy all the time. Oh, really? Yeah, most of the races are in Italy, right. and um, I think the last few years they started to you know to spread it a, a bit more. But normally, it's everything in Italy. Every uh, factory, uh, factory, karting factories in Italy. Yeah. And in uh, 2016, when I was, well, 15 to 16 years old, I went to German F4. German F4? Yeah. Why Why German? Because it was, back then, it was the, the strongest one, actually. Okay. It was a, was a better one. I think they just announced they're going to finish it for next year. So it's going to be, you know. No off. more German F4. No more German I know F4. they have British F4. I didn't know there was even different no, di types of F4. I knew there was Formula Renault, which is f yeah. Formula 4, right? Yeah. Uh, the Renault, which is now called Regional, mm -hmm. uh, it's in between Formula 4 and Formula 3, the international Formula 3 that you see yeah. with F1. Yeah. So basically what people are doing now, they do Formula 4, which there is only you know national championships. So mm -hmm. Italian, which I think is the strongest right now, but... Italian, British, uh, and everything. Then you go to regional, and then Formula 3, Formula 2. So what age did you learn English? Because assuming in Brazilian, you're Portuguese, right? You yeah. speak Portuguese. Yeah. So you must have had to learn English really early. Or or Italian, did you learn Italian? I, I did learn Italian as well. But so you can speak three languages? Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Is that Does that help when you work with different mechanics? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in Formula 1, there's a lot of Italian people as well. Or well, English, you, no matter from where from they are, you're just talking English. But uh, if if I see an Italian person, it's quite nice. I can connect a bit more, which is nice. I wish we could do that because yeah. we travel so much now and yeah. we can only speak English. And I feel so embarrassed that I actually can't speak yeah. another language. Yeah. like And I hear it because you no, hear it in the paddock. Like everyone in, in the F1 bad, paddock. But at least you, you know the only one that really matters, you know. The, the key language, yeah. the, the master language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel yourself picking up like English slang? Like working with like English mechanics? And yeah, people? yeah. A few times, yeah. But, uh, you know. Never really tried to learn it. But, uh, <laughs> You've got really good English, though. Yeah, thank you. And That's Italian, I'm guessing, and, and Portuguese. And probably but all, yeah. all of them, yeah. I'd say yeah, you're probably yeah. pretty good at all of them. I tried English. Uh, I started learning, like, you asked, I didn't answer your question, but I started learning when I was a kid, like, just in school, but I wasn't great at all. When I moved, I was really bad in English. And and I'm just, yeah, with the motorsport, you just learn. Mm. Aside yeah. with all the bad words you, you learn in, in motorsport. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to quickly jump back to what we said about um, Marcus, because we do really want Marcus on the pod. 
And I saw something about you speaking about Screaming Mills. The yeah. podcast is great. I just need to clear one thing up. Did you and Marcus start that? Uh, no. He Well, I was... On the you were involved. I know you were there. I was in the first show. Oh, uh, so they're on like yeah. a mo- another series now. They've done more than one. Yeah, yeah. They, they've done quite many. Oh, it's podcasts. No, no, they they they've done quite many podcasts now, because basically at the beginning it was uh, Marcus and James. Yeah. Uh, which is his friend, um, that started it, and then my teammate Clem. He basically just promoted himself to, you know, co-host, co-co-host. Oh, he just decided yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to nah, be a co-host. No, 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 but I, I mean, we're all very good friends and then uh, he just joined it. So it's pretty pretty much like just three guys yeah. hosting it and then I uh, guess. <laughs> <laughs> we watched it. We watched a few episodes. It was funny as hell. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like we we sometimes need a third guest, maybe. Like, because we don't know a lot. Of, I don't know how much you know about us, but we don't know a lot about Formula One at all. So no, we know a lot more now. We know a lot more now, but when we started, we knew nothing. So we thought it might be good to have like a third person who knows everything about Formula One. He can just fact check anything. See, I thought that, but then from your point of view, you're a driver. You do media interviews all the time, and people ask you the same questions. Yeah. So I mean, it must that's be why quite it's n- nice to do a pod where it's talking about. Yeah, that's why it's nice podcasts. I mean, podcasts are a lot better than you know. How was the car? How was the race? Yeah. Uh, what happened? Lap three. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, just getting to know more each other and yeah, just making jokes, making carpurines. <laughs> <laughs> since um, since being involved with like Aston Martin and that Formula One world, has there been a lot more media that you've had to do? Has there been? Yeah. Have you felt more cameras on you, more interviews? And yeah, a how, lot more. <laughs> what's it like? Like it from my point of view, it must be so annoying on a race day. Uh, f- you know, in a race day, I, I try to refuse everything. You know, just to be fully fully focused. But, uh, you know, for example, I went to the Brazilian GP and even though I wasn't driving, it's it's been mad. Chaos. It was like the whole day just doing media stuff (laughs) and and in front of a camera or at some point I was coming back from the grid before the start and I just saw, just heard like the whole straight line just shouting Felipe. (laughs) But I thought it was for Massa. And at some point, they started shouting like "Drugo, Drugo, Drugo." I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> they gave me the goosebumps. It was like crazy, crazy, crazy. Massa was there this year, wasn't he? he yeah, was, yeah, he was with F1. Yeah. Is he a big inspiration to you? Yeah, yeah, he's a good friend now. I mean, yeah. I got to know him uh, probably a couple of years ago, and then uh, yeah, since then, every time we meet, uh, it's a great, great time. What is it like stepping over that barrier, like? For me, I love music. So if I ever like got to meet my favorite musicians that I had stood in the crowd and watched, it'd be like unreal. So how do you deal with growing up with these people, like idolizing these people, would you say? And then all of a sudden you're friends with them and you're working with them. What's that like? Yeah, it's, it's really cool. Uh, you know, I'm, I can say I'm kind of an introvert, so I'm not the, the guy that goes there and keep asking things, but my my real wish is actually to do that is you know, to you know to keep asking and try to learn as much as I can from these guys because you know for sure they have a lot more experience and and uh yeah they can help a lot mm. you're going to so. be working with Fab's favorite driver next year his favorite driver is Alonso Fernando yeah he's, <laughs> my favorite man he's <laughs> the fucking best have you spoke to him yet met him yeah, yeah. I mean the the test I did in Abu Dhabi I was in one car and he was in the other car oh yeah, yeah. Fab is with your favourite driver. I know. Yeah. I, I can't get him on the pod yet because I love him so much. I feel like I have to wait until I at least know him a little bit because I'll just be sat here like. <laughs> has he has he given you any advice? Has he has he been like helpful? Tried to give you any tips or anything? No. Basically, the first thing <laughs> the, the, the first thing he asked me. Well, first of all, was, hey Felipe, how are you? And then, so what did you think about the car in FP1? That was it. The first question. I was like. Yeah, it was good. So uh, anything I need to know and stuff, like he asking to me, I was like, yeah, that's oh, that's shit. supposed to be me asking you, <laughs> not you asking me. Because he's just switched teams. Yeah, so yeah, 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 he just switched teams and I driven the car in FP1. Right. And, and oh, so t- he hadn't even driven it yet? Yeah, for the test, he, he was his first time first time driving that car. Course, and he just course. came to me, he was like, what should I expect from the car and stuff? I was like, I just drove for 40 minutes the car. You, you, I'm, I'm supposed to be asking you, not me. That's insane. Yeah. That's insane. You but, think which is around. really cool. Like it shows, you know, how much you know, fire he has to, to the sport and it's, it's amazing yeah, I think that's why I love him so much I think in his age yeah. you know, he's not even old but yeah. in terms of the grid he's older and he's still yeah. got that fire in him yeah, like, yeah. I think put him in a, in a in a decent car like an Aston Martin and maybe he'll 
fucking win the championship again. Mm. Yeah. yeah, things look exciting, Aston Martin. You joined at a good time. I think it's going to yeah, be a good yeah, year. Yeah, they're really investing and, you know, trying to, to be to be champions. That's uh, that's the main goal for them. And they are, they're really pushing, you know, building a new, completely new team. Mm. Uh, so there's a massive headquarters, new headquarters yeah, yeah. by Silverstone. And, uh, you know, they're really pushing you with wind tunnel and stuff like that. So it's really cool to, you know, to be in a team that is making progress, not one that's completely stopped. We also need to say a massive thank you to Eve, who you work with, because yep. um, <laughs> this is genuinely true. I woke up this morning and I had an email from Eve and it said, hope today goes well. So I looked at it and I was like, <laughs> oh, shit. I genuinely, I thought this was tomorrow. Oh, I was dead certain. And if Eve hadn't have emailed, you would have turned up at like three or four. I would have, because England game's on tonight. So we're going to have some we drinks. We would have been in our team football football game. I would have turned up at that door and been like, Felipe, what are you doing here? <laughs> so Eve, thank you so much for reminding me. Yeah. Pit stop podcast, we forget yeah, yeah. everything. Dates cool. and nightmares. Yeah, Eve's, uh, yeah, she's really, yeah, really nice to me and helping me a lot. Have you had to meet a whole new team or have you like took some people that you worked with before? No, no, over? it's completely a whole, whole new team. And yeah, first thing I asked was just a complete PDF with, with all the names because I'm so bad with names. Yeah, and, yeah. So, so. But you know, Aston now has, I think, 700 people. Oh, no, to the track, yeah, I think it's probably going you know, 80 or 100, but still is 80 people. That's that a lot of people. I yeah. need to learn the names. And <laughs> at some point I'm like, oh, I don't know. Nice to meet you, but yeah. Uh, and you're going to be at every race next year? Um, most of the races, I think. Uh, yeah, they uh, didn't give me the details yet, but uh, I think, uh, yeah, I'm going to be there as a reserve driver. <laughs> also, Stoffel is going to be reserve. So Stoffel too? Yeah. Is he, doing, is he doing the Formula E next year? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think we're kind of going to be sharing, so it depends um, what commitments he had. And, Do they, yeah. How does it work with two reserve drivers, one team? Would they pick like, who's best at what track? Uh, no, I think they just, you know, uh, they actually, I don't know, to be fair, I don't know the details yet, but they might appoint uh, one of each for each race. And then yeah. if someone has to be replaced, uh, it's the one that is already there on the track. Yeah, yeah. I bet you're going to be there on the sidelines, just <laughs> desperate to get yeah, in I'm just going to be knocking on the door the whole <laughs> <Yeah>. time. <laughs> how, much, how much prep can, can they put in for preparing you it, just in case you do get called up because you have to make your seat tailor-made right yeah, so yeah, yeah is the seat already made now and they can bring it in uh well for the 22 car is already made but then for the 2023 car i'm gonna be doing it i think in february or something like that mm -hmm. uh but yeah it's gonna be a new seat for me and everything's gonna be you know ready in case i, I need to to hop in the car i want to go back to my first question that we i screwed it up because i was giving you the drink <laughs> but how different is it power steering and no power steering um really really different i mean to be fair actually uh, formula 2 car is a bit weird uh, because uh we need to to i don't know how much you, you know about mechanics and stuff i know like. everything about formula yeah. cars. <laughs> <laughs> but you know the uh the ratio we use is quite long just to make sure uh we don't have to push as much force because otherwise you cannot turn the steering wheel it's just so heavy because mm -hmm, the amount yeah. of downforce we have yeah you just in fast corners if you don't have a longer you know steering rack uh, we just cannot turn the steering it's just so heavy and then because of that it becomes quite long and compared to an f1 car that you don't you don't used to be that long uh, then it's just you know quite short and light so it's a bit weird at the beginning but well so you're basically saying you have to you have to turn more in f2 than yeah. in f1 wow. but even though you're turning a lot more it's still a lot more force you need to put in than in yeah. f1 has that uh, have you found that easy to learn easy to get used to yeah i mean it, it takes a bit of time you know to get used but like uh, i guess you know, sim work and yeah stuff like that yeah sim work and you know like a few outings then you get used to it obviously the the, the probably the last two tens it takes a bit of time you know to get uh, to it but uh you know it's quite fine actually You're pretty quick on a sim uh yeah and the sim I'm, I'm actually really good uh okay uh, how, how good are you around austria uh i was all right i think it was p3 this year in quality Okay, well, we, we kind of want you to join our board. Oh, okay. yeah. Have, have, you, have you not seen this board yet? Yeah. So this is the fastest I was looking at that, I was like, what is that? Mm. So Oscar is currently top, Oscar Piastri over 105, round Austria. Okay. Which isn't actually that quick, because okay. me and Fab are terrible. Okay. So, well, no, it's not bad from Oscar, but you have to bear in mind it's on our sim. Okay. And our sim has, like, 
kind of dodgy pedals. Okay. <laughs> also, bear in mind that ours was fully automatic. We had full traction, full brake assist, like everything on. All right. You're going to have medium traction when okay. you do your, because you're going to do a lap after this. Okay. I don't Perfect. know if Jake's told you that or not. <laughs> uh, no, no, I didn't yeah. tell him. <laughs> yeah, you're going to set a lap. Right. <laughs> um, and also, you're going to be doing the gears because obviously you know how to mm. do it. Jake had a go on the gears earlier. Okay. He was stuck in eighth. <laughs> For the whole, for I don't the know whole how track. you do the gears. When you're doing the gears when you're driving, you're not. You don't even have to think about it. You're doing it in your head. Yeah, you're just. You I mean, know. it's quite easy. You have lights. You have. You have actually a beep uh, on the radio. Do you? Yeah. I did oh, not wow. know that. Uh, I don't know how many for people for for downshift to do yourself. I That's don't know how many point. people knew that. I don't think many people know that at all. Yeah. I've never heard that. I before. mean, it's, it actually changes from driver to driver, but most of the drivers just want it. Wow. Uh, Actually, in, in Formula One, there's so much info you get from engineer beeps on the radio is just constantly constantly, constantly, yeah. constantly going in your yeah. ear. Yeah, at the end of the pod, we'll um, do a quick lap, see what you can get. Yeah. But yeah, obviously we had Oscar on and he he won F2 mm -hmm. and then he did very similar to you, Reserve. Yeah. And then now he's got a seat in F1. Yeah. Hopefully next year. Hopefully, hopefully. It's what, it must be one of those, like, <clears throat> to be honest with you, when we've had drivers on, for this first year, we've been a bit like, what can we ask? We've we felt a bit like, where's our barrier? Yeah. But like, to be completely honest, like you, you obviously your goal is to be in F1, isn't it? It's to yeah. drive or is to drive on the grid. Yeah, yeah. And joining Aston Martin does look like a really good way of getting there. Like, yeah, I mean, they they are starting the you know the drivers program, the the young drivers program. They they study now, uh, and they're studying it with me, uh, which is really good. And yeah. you know, hopefully they they can bring me forward to oh this to is the, the first year that they're doing it yeah and you're the first guy yeah yeah that's like a moment in history i mean actually young drivers program they, they take the, the driving you know from very 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 young age and bring mm. it forward i'm actually you know just at the end of it mm. at the end of the cycle you know but just, you're the face of it yeah yeah but you know i think i hope uh they they can make it work and then i'll be the first one to actually make use of it if you couldn't have got into formula two <clears throat> and formula three and, and potentially formula one what do you think you'd be doing? Do you think, do you have any other interests? Like, do you th like, would you have been a chef or would you have just raced like touring cars or IndyCar or something like that? Uh, no, I think I'll still be into motorsports. Mm. Um, probably, you know, sports car will be really cool. Um, but yeah, other than motorsports, I think I'll be playing tennis or something. Tennis, you're a big yeah. tennis fan? Yeah. What do you like at golf? Uh, I never played golf. You never played golf? Yeah. Okay, this, I, I like this could be I, fun. I like you know playing the guitar, so I'm into music. So. Well, I saw on your Instagram story there's a picture of you holding a guitar. So no, I'm really bad. Guitar. This is the worst thing. I, this is the worst thing. I prefer to do the lap on the sim than play a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we set him up with a drink, a guitar, and a sim. But the plan was to get you drunk so that you play the guitar and then you shit on the sim. That was the, that was the plan. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay, so we can ditch the guitar, <laughs> okay, but we will do the lap of the right, sim. Okay. Oh, I really wanted us to all sit around there and sing something, some Brazilian song or Little something. Little campfire thing. What, what, what do you like playing? What do you listen to? Uh, I like actually everything, but uh, probably some rock music. Yeah, yeah. Like easy rock, not, you know, like hard rock and yeah. heavy metal. Do you like the Foo Fighters? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, the police and stuff like that. Police? Um, you know, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Stuff like that. But, uh, you know, everything. Even, like, you know, Blink and yeah, MDK, yeah. these guys. And all yeah, that, yeah, I, really yeah. like, yeah. I always thought, like, whenever I play Call of Duty, I'm so much better at quick scopes when I have music playing. <laughs> yeah. Do you think if you were driving a race car, <laughs> if you had, like, a bit of red hot chili peppers, bap, 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 in your, in your <laughs> ear as you're driving around the track, do you think you would drive better or do you think it would be worse? Uh... <laughs> Actually, really good question. Um, I don't think I will be faster. Depends what part of the song it's at. Yeah. If you're fly if it's at a good part, it, when it you're depend doing that overtake. it depends on the mindset at that point as well. Like if you're nervous, uh, if they actually, if the song, if you're already nervous and you put like you know, Metallica, or, I don't know, uh, not Metallica, but like something really going crazy on it, it's yeah. just just gonna make it worse, you know. Yeah. yeah. But uh, <laughs> I think the music really helps to you know to put you in the right. Uh, frequency do you live do you listen to music before a race because i yeah. noticed daniel you know daniel ricardo's always got his beats on yeah mm. i don't know whether he's actually listening to anything on them or not uh, some people listen to music some people listen to you know frequencies which is really cool frequencies yeah 
like a low like a like a meditation yeah, type. yeah yeah some people really yeah who like you, nature sounds and stuff like that who do you know who does that i i do so really sometimes i do yeah that's actually really interesting yeah does that just help like mellow you do you get a good yeah, mindset I, I mean first i think you need to understand what state of mind you are like if you're just totally calm and you know dead and maybe you need to listen something to something just to pump you up a little bit mm. or or the opposite which is this case with the frequencies and stuff yeah just, but it helps quite a lot actually you know just you know kind of almost meditating you know like uh before the race is really cool yeah this, this drink's definitely starting to kick in a little bit now. I feel, okay, actually, I'm, I've been sipping <laughs> You're it. You're actually drinking it. Where yeah, do you I've been put, Oh, it. mine's here. I thought you took it away from me. I feel like that's why I'm getting some really good questions out. Yeah, they're great questions, mate. Have, <laughs> have you ever had any... Um, so we spoke to Ollie Caldwell. You must know Ollie Caldwell. Mm -hmm. um, and we asked if he's ever had any crazy cool. stories like on the track <laughs> or anything like that. <laughs> And um, come so on, man. Bad, it's the first man. time I've made it. What come even on. is that? No, genuinely, when I drink it... It's a capybara. All I taste is is that. Surely I should taste. Well, that something is the majority else. of the drink. So I surely something should kick me. I think I did something wrong with the sugar, didn't I? It's not very sweet. Yeah, it's not. It's not even the same sugar we use in Brazil. What sugar yeah. are you meant to use? Um, it looks the same, but it tastes different. Like cane, cane sugar? Or like no, no, no. It's just normal sugar, but uh, for mm. some reason, like I, I've, for some I, reason, I, mine tastes like shit. No, 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 <laughs> no. no. The, the Europeans <laughs> ones like they, they just. Mm, they don't do anything in fact we need to put a lot less from the Brazilian one and it still really? makes it quite sweet almost like um, a lot of mechanics that I had they asked me to bring uh, you know the rum from Brazil and the uh, lime and, and the, the sugar especially the, the sugar is yeah, the one yeah. that makes the difference right interesting and, and they were like can you bring it for me please 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 <laughs> the Brazilian pretty... Grand Prix next year we'll have a couple of these together yeah we'll yeah. find somewhere and we'll have some yeah we'll yeah. make sure that they taste a bit better than these ones I, I didn't offer myself to help because not even me I know how to make it like oh, a good really? one, so yeah okay. well I thought it would be simple there's only like three ingredients in it but yeah it's clearly supposed I to be up. but yeah it was worth a try, yeah. mate. You, did, you did well, bro. Thank you so much. I appreciate no, it. I appreciate. I appreciate you, boys. You could have said a lot of worse things. That's not so too bad. Thank, thank you. Um, yeah, going back to the question. So, Ollie Caldwell said that he had a he had a dog actually climb into his car, and he did a lap of the circuit with a dog in, in his F4, car. Four, wasn't it? Was it an F four? Oh, it yeah. climbed into like the was it the air intake or like yeah. one of the side pods? What's what's like the craziest story? That you I was had? That, was it in F four? I think I was. Oh, at you F4? remember it? I think I was at that race. You were. I think so, because there was a story like that in a race that I was yeah, in. Yeah, dog in, in a side pod or something. <laughs> yeah. They realized just before they started. Yeah, and they, they just ran away. He did a whole lap with the dog in, and then they got the dog yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. They, they ran away. Yeah. That's it. And the dog wasn't dead because he was you know, like actually into the side <laughs> pod, which is really hard in there. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. yeah. But the, dog, the dog wasn't cooked. No. Blimey. No, they just took the side pod out and the dog just... <laughs> ran away. That's the weirdest thing. Like we had Calamon, who's like um like senior power unit technician of Red Bull. <laughs> nice. And he said that he dropped a spanner into someone's gearbox. Into Verstappen's gearbox. Verstappen's gearbox. And he won the race, but there was a spanner inside the gearbox the oh, whole yeah. time. So yeah. I mean, have you had any weird shit that's happened? Like we want we want, we want some, some exclusive. We want stories. some clickbait. <laughs> we need some views. Okay. I'm really bad at <laughs> we need some I, I, really when, when someone actually asked me, like, hey, have you had something like that? I was like, oh, me, I cannot remember now. But uh, like there must have been a time when you when like you just thought this is not my day, like something's gone wrong, or I have to go out and, and I'm like, oh uh, do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, but uh Really if you bad. haven't, then you've had good luck. No, yeah, well, normally I had good luck with the car and stuff like that, but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, something really weird. Oh yeah, one, once I, you know, we went to, I used to do a championship between the years in Europe, when, when the year is finished here, you know, around November or something. Yeah. We went to, most of the people in F4 and F3, they either go to New Zealand and they do the uh, TRS, Toyota Racing Series. It's just like a Formula Championship just to keep racing during the winter. Okay. And then there's another one which is called MIF, uh, which is an Indian Championship, but it races also in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Indian? Yeah. Wow. And then the, the final race is in India. And uh, we went to the track walk the first time I went there and my engineer just took a knife with him. I was like, what, what is that? <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, because it's full of snakes here. I was like, oh my God. Snake? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh whoa. So we took a knife. And then I was like, ah, it's impossible. And I was like, never the, <laughs> it's never going to be in the car and stuff like that. And then <laughs> in the last race, actually, I was leading. I was P1. And then 
in the last half, I just, you know, I just, I was looking really further ahead and then I just avoided something in the road, but I, I didn't think it was something. And then it just, when everything was finished, one of the cars just came with half a mega snake just hanging from that side. Oh board. my God. But like a proper thick snake. No. But half of it. I am petrified of snakes. We see you see quite a few animals on the track. Like watching the F one this year, there was a load of birds and zanders. Yeah, on the I got corner. a bird this year as well. You you hit you yeah. hit one yeah. really. And then yeah, the mechanic was disgusted, just clean cleaning it. Oh, yeah, that's that's like, what you forget about it. Someone's got to clean it. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I I drove over a rabbit. Yeah, I, I tried <laughs> to help a little bit, but I was like, <laughs> throw it up. Did I'd you hate clean that. the mess you made? I didn't make a mess. Like I, you said, it was you're still not alive. in a Formula One car. You're driving a Golf down a road like thirty. He's got a good excuse for hitting a bird, okay? which is a good car, by the way. VW Golf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's a quality it's car. Yeah. Carlos Sainz drove one for ages. So you are full of facts today, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> are you impressed? Yeah. <laughs> Every fucking. Day. This is your off season, pretty much. Yeah. This is your break, and it's Christmas. Yep. So, will you be going back to Brazil? Yep. For Christmas? Yeah, in oh. around uh, 10 days. And you'll be with family, friends? Yeah. I'll be there for almost a month, and then I come back. I want to know what a Felipe Dragovic Christmas day looks like. What do you do in the morning? What do you do in the afternoon? Sleep a lot. Uh, <laughs> Probably go... Why does every F2 driver say that they sleep so much? <laughs> well, you're not an F2 because, driver it's anymore. It's such a draining, but, yeah, draining we job. Do, we don't do much, basically. <laughs> I mean, uh, we train yeah. every day, but it doesn't need to be at 6 p.m. In the, uh, 6 a.m. in the morning. True. Uh, and yeah, but, uh, you know, I think in the off-season, I try to, you know, uh, catch up with the sleep because during the season, it's quite, it's quite tough. Actually, mm. if you only do F2, I was like, okay, it's quite normal, you know, because yeah. it was 14 races. But then when the F1 uh, commitments started to kick in, I was like, okay, it's getting a lot of traveling here and there. Mm. But uh, no, I, I go there. It's it's summer there and Christmas in Brazil. It's the opposite. So, what? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. So yeah, no snow. You've no. Like never had snow on Christmas. No, not even in winter you have snow there. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it away. Cut that bit. It just rains. Cut that bit yeah, out of the just rains. <laughs> But uh, no, yeah, we just uh, had a nice uh, dinner with the family and that's it. Is that like a ro we have roast dinner here? So do you know what that is? Uh, what is that? Like where you have like what's it called roast dinner? Isn't it's it? a roast, yeah, Christmas dinner. So you have like a roast bird, like normally a turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have turkey as well. Yeah, and depends okay. on the family. Some some have pork and yeah, depends. yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you play games. Uh, it depends on the family. My my one is pretty chill. It's like yeah, dinner. So yeah, cool. that's right, it. Dinner. Fuck off. Yeah. I, need to go to, I need to go to sleep. Yeah. Very chill. Like no, no, no games normally. But yeah, mm. also in New Year's, no, normally I, I spend with the family. But uh, this year, as I don't have so much time in Brazil, I might go and you know, uh, be in New Year's by the beach, by the coast. What's your, what's your local beach? Well, the closest beach from my city in Brazil is like around 500 kilometers. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, so I normally go to the south. Uh, it's called uh, Camboriú, it's oh, Florianópolis. Oh, I know it. Yeah, I'm familiar. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. I've actually no. been to Brazil, so I do know. He, Jake has been to Brazil know, and he's got, been got a very... Where have you been to? I've been to a few places. I've okay. been to Sao Paulo, okay. Rio de Janeiro <laughs> okay. and Salvador. Salvador, okay. Yeah. yeah. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was good yeah. fun. Yeah. I, I was in Salvador for a little bit, Rio for the Olympics. Why don't you just tell him what you've got in the flat? Uh, bring it out. Bring all it right. out. All right. Keep him talking then. Keep him talking. Jake was, Jake was a very lucky boy. A couple of years ago, he actually managed to um, run with the, with the Olympic oh. torch. Have you, have you seen yeah, that? I know, I know, I know. This is my one. This is the, the cool. real I one. I actually ran with. I That's ran really with cool. So I kept it forever. Let me see this. Yeah, it's cool, right? Actually, I have, I have a few friends that they, they did it as well. Uh, Do they have a torch as well? I don't know if they kept it or not. We had a few friends who ran with it. Special. Oh, it was yeah, actually so really not cool. special at all. Then. Yeah, because Coca-Cola let me keep it, which I thought was really cool. <laughs> that is actually amazing. And I've got that forever now. Was it 2012? 2016. 2016. Time absolutely flies. What were you doing in 2016? Where Formula were you? Formula 4. Formula Four. Yeah. Do, do you feel that, I guess COVID was like a gap in that time. Which yeah. slowed everything down. Yeah. It's just amazing how quick time flies because you're so young. Yeah. And like we feel young in this sport as well. We meet other people like our age yeah. doing crazy It's very things. easy to forget about COVID, I think, and how that can affect mm -hmm. your career. Do you think you would have been in the position you're in now a couple of years earlier if it wasn't for COVID? No. No, I think it didn't really change the, you know, the, my progress and stuff. Mm. The year, like, actually, I was already in, in Formula 2 in 2020 yeah. and it was a really good year. I was rookie and I got four, about well, three wins and... That's a really good year. It's quite funny because you see a lot of young drivers on the grid. Like you see Lando, obviously Max started really young. 
I don't know how old Seb was, Sebastian Vettel, when he started F1, but he was super young too. I think but he was around 1920. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, coming into to Formula One, because we started at the start of this year, I guess a lot of our attention was on Max, and you see that he started when, he, I don't know how old Max was, was he 17? Yeah. When he started F1. And I assumed, like footballers, that they all started really that young, but... When you consider the longevity of someone like, you know, Lewis is, is getting up there now. Obviously, Alonso, Kimi was quite old when he retired. So you guys still, even at your age, 22, so if you were to start Formula One next year, you'd be 23, mm -hmm. right? You could, you've still got like 15, 15 years of racing. That's a long ass time, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even longer if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. hopefully. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's the main goal. But uh, yeah, I think uh, F1, it's, you know, as long as I mean, it, it's actually quite physical, but I think more in the you know the, the long term, like a year is very tiring. Uh, tiring, I would say for for someone that works in a team or or, yeah. or the driver as well, because a lot of a lot of traveling and you know actually driving the car is not you know the, the it's not like running a marathon or something, but you still have to be prepared for that. Yeah. But actually, in the long term, is very you know very consuming. Yeah. Also, the, all the pressure is very, is very intense. Yeah, we'll be going for fifty minutes, and we do need to do the the sim. But yeah, the event tonight, you're going to what is it? Autosport. Yeah, Autosport Awards. We didn't get invited. No, we didn't. I F saw gnomes just sneak well. in. Funnily just enough, sneak in. <laughs> funnily enough, we didn't get invited. I wonder why. <laughs> the England, we're watching the England game. Do you watch? Uh, you into football at all? Uh, not really. F not so much. Just yeah. for the uh, the World Cup. No. Supporting Brazil. Yeah, 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 that's yeah they're on tomorrow. I was going to say. Yeah. I wish it was England Brazil. We could have stayed and watched it. Who are they playing with tomorrow? Uh, you've got Korea, Korea. tomorrow. Okay. That it's nice to meet terrible. someone else who doesn't really care about yeah. football. Yeah. My whole life I've been surrounded by people who love football. Yeah. That's and a, I have to watch it. Point, and because we live together, I have to watch it on TV every day. Yeah. <laughs> and I fucking hate it. <laughs> <laughs> right. But anyway. Oh, the sim is on. So, should we leave over from rolling? Do it quick and come back. We're going to grab the camera. We're yep. going to do a few laps on the sim. Hope you're feeling ready. Hope the capybara hasn't gone to your head too much. And um, you've got one minute, five seconds, point nine three one to beat if you want to beat Oscar. Is that <laughs> F1 game? F1 yeah, yeah, game. yeah. Okay. Is that good? Red, Red Bull ring, Austria. No, I might be really bad at that, but okay. It's all right. You get a bit of practice. It's three laps. Okay. Yeah, three laps, yeah. So, pick the best. Yeah. Do you think, well, I was going to say, do you think you could beat it? But you might not know. Hopefully, it can be this, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Do you All know right. what? As long as you watch, watch on me, <laughs> as long as you beat me and Jake, I think you're fine. <laughs> We've left the gap, so you have to be us. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go. It's very different to the proper one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not a deal. I'm, uh, I'm actually nervous for this. <laughs> I'm not the guy that gets nervous for it, but yeah. Are we rolling? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, Pit Stop Podcast, we are back. Felipe has done his lap. How do you think it went? Um, yeah, I think six laps to, you know, do the lap wasn't enough to put it all together, but, uh, yeah. We gave you a few extra because you haven't really played that game. It's, yeah. The, that game is a lot different to the... I mean, it was six, five or six laps in total, so... Yeah. One of them I just uh, binned it completely, so... <laughs> <laughs> what do you normally play? Is it like a set of courses? I race, yeah, normally I do, but, uh, yeah. Let's see. I'm nervous for this. I'm actually not nervous at all normally, but for this I'm actually nervous. Okay, well... The good news is you beat me and Fab. Okay. So th that is good. Okay. Um, Felipe Dragovic, you have done it in a one. All right. Oh, six. Okay. Point three one, which puts us here. Oh. So second place, which is fine because we actually only have, well, there's only two people on there. Bro, there's like six hundredths of a tenth of a second. That is so that tight. That's <laughs> that is really close. That is really close, considering that you haven't played this game. All right, that's, that's pretty impressive. I'll give you that. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually um, satisfied with that. That's going to be good. Say, yeah. Me and Fab have played this game a lot, and we think some people will struggle to beat us. Yeah, because we've played it a lot. Yeah. So that's a really good time. <laughs> Round of applause for Felipe yeah. Dragovic! Yeah. <laughs> Felipe, thank you so much for joining Thanks, us guys. on the pod. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations very much. on your amazing year in thank F2, you. Yeah, and thank wish you. you the best of luck. Thank you guys for, for letting me in. And uh, yeah, thank you for everyone that's watched. <laughs> Enjoy the uh, awards and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank Have you. a great night, Felipe. See Cheers, man. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cool. Cheers, man. Thanks so much. Bro, let's go. Let's Did you enjoy it? Yeah. <laughs> Just the cafeteria. I didn't put it on. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks so much. Man. Man.